Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, I'm going to talk about meta materials. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, saying meta material is meaningless. It's like saying nanotechnology because it's a vast field of study, as in like many things are including. It's more like a sub subject of physics, so to say. So fundamentally, we are talking about materials that have been engineered. Now, you have to understand this. Nature has a lot of material, a lot of crystals and a lot of that. However, these puppies that we are talking about are not made in nature. Now, be mindful. There is a very critical distinction. Uh, alive things, non alive things uh, not found in nature simply means uh, basically dead things uh, because again for example there is a very good uh, interesting meta material you must have seen it it's called butterfly butterfly wings have colors because of the geometry not because of the pigments uh, that's a surprisingly high level engineering goes into the uh, basically wing color so to say so you have to understand it. when we are saying not found in nature that simply means you can't dug, dig it up or you can't mine it so to say and not to mention almost everything uh, like metal glass these are also non uh, you know basically non-nature based so to say so this definition is kind of vague but that's what we are talking about we are talking about something that is fundamentally engineered now you, you might be like okay why the heck if we have the material let's say iron uh, basically aluminium titanium uh, iron copper tungsten, magnesium, zinc and all that, if we have all that, why the heck do we need this so-called meta materials? The reality is uh, we can control the properties. For example, let's say you make a foam uh, for your shoe with whatever material that you want to wear. Now here's the deal, most of the time if you use that for your uh, shoe, it will be very comfortable. But what will happen if you uh, step on top of a nail? Here's the deal, normal materials behave normally and it will go through. You can design a meta material that is a completely soft, butter smooth, you don't have to give it an order. But the moment it encounters a nail, it becomes hard in that exact place. So it does not penetrate through. So fundamentally, you can, uh, what we call, fundamentally behavior can be changed so you it will literally behave uh, unintuitively you're like dude it's springy but somehow when it's not supposed to become uh, springy it will become hard when it will become springy it's up to you so we tailor made its behavior it's no longer like okay let's say steel is this much footy it like if you bend it 10 20 times it will break normal steel does that now you can fundamentally make it into a meta, uh, meta material and make it in such a way where it's like hmm you can keep bending it for thousands of time, it will not give a damn. So fundamentally, you are changing the behavior and it will not act uh, the way you think it will. That's the whole fundamental why. It's not like, whoa, that's how things are supposed to behave. No, it's like, it will. It, if it shocks you, yeah, that's uh, we are talking about meta material. It's like gold having green color. So why we are interested in making something so convoluted and complicated? The reality is every time you look into the human civilization, we are limited by the material technology we have. For example, bronze age, iron age, things of that nature. So fundamentally, we are always limited by the materials we have. For example, a camera lens is a very good piece of engineering. But here's the why the heck it's so big and huge? Now you might say, hey, we can make it like, you know, small for mobile camera. No, no, we can't make it small. That's why we make the sensor small. We cannot make it fundamentally small. So if you take, let's say, full frame camera lenses, uh, you can't make them very small. Like you can trim the size down a bit, but not too much. So why can't we do that? Because there is a fundamental limit of the material. So glass crystals that we use does not matter which co compound it, ha uh, it has, like basically gorilla glass or diamond glass or sapphire glass or whatever have you. It has a fundamental behavior pa pattern based on glass. And it's limited so for example let's say you have one millimeter sheet of glass it's not gonna bend the light no matter what you're gonna do it's like it light mostly will go through however if you are doing meta materials you can design in such a way that one millimeter thick uh, glass sheet can literally bend the light like no, uh, nobody's business you can literally have bending capacity of equivalent of uh, let's say one centimeter thick glass like uh, that's how a prism uh, prism i'm saying yeah you can think of it this way yeah cut uh, basically lens in half it becomes a prism so light bending ability so you can literally design a meta material that can do a job of a heavy glass element in a fraction of its size so you can take oh, this glass element which is 100 grams for say and you can be like okay this is one gram alternative that does the same thing that's why we can like control properties in such a way where new things become possible and the, um, uh, the abilities to do things will become flat out impossible right now it's like imagine this way having an eyewear that is like fundamentally paper thin you don't even have to think about it. It's like, yeah, it's a glass, you don't even think about it. And it will change automatically depending on requirements. Of, again, if you want it, it will change. If you don't want it, it won't. And if it drops, it will not break. So you can do things that flat out does not make sense. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. This is like, you know, paper thin glass and it's like, you know, uh, super capable in terms of it's a glass magnifying capability. That's the whole point. So imp impossible properties and capabilities become possible if you know how to build it. 
So what are the types of uh, metamaterial? Again, metamaterial is just a field of study. So they have multiple of them, like more of them that I'm listing here. But first one is mechanical. So whenever you are talking about something that is solid and behaving like a different kind of thing, for example, uh, you see a door knob, door handle, or something. you have multiple pieces in that. For example, a handle, which has an access, which has a bearing or some sort of surface where it rides on, like a bushing most likely. So you have something doing like this and then you have a linkage that is pulling something like this. Yes, all of those can be made into one solid material utilizing meta material design all you are changing is design basically you are you can make this out of a 3d printer or you can have uh, made it out of a normal uh, metal which just you know laser cutting the holes patterns and all that and you can literally achieve all those motion basically rotational motion and changing into linear motion in one solid piece there is no two piece in this i have provided the video down below look at it so it's like you can achieve things that does not make sense for example origami is the first time humans have figured that out like think of it this way when you are dealing with origami you are taking a paper folding it and making something 3d you just made one extra dimension out of a two dimensional material that's amazing so fundamentally its mechanical department has been used very seriously and nasa is looking very deeply into this in order to make uh, amazing things like james webb space telescope and uh, future telescopes which will have very giant uh, sunshade it's like sunshade is size of a freaking uh, you know giant cricket field so to say like how the heck they're gonna pack this into like you know a small tiny rocket fairy that's why so meta materials allows us to do mechanical things that does not make sense it's like how the heck a solid block has multiple axis of rotation it's like okay it's gonna rotate here and it's gonna do linear here and all of this is just one goddamn object mechanical meta materials then you have electromagnetic one this is the most interesting one simply because most of the things that we want to believe can be done with this for example Harry Potter's magic cloak. Why? Because it works on a metamaterial level on a electromagnetic spectrum. So if you have electromagnetic spectrum and somehow you can guide electromagnetic spectrums, it's like, bro, go from here. If you can do that, you can become tangibly, physically invisible. It can be done. But And the people who are studying on that, like uh, dealing with electromagnetic radiation, be it microwave, be it infrared, be it ultraviolet, they are dealing with what we call electromagnetic ultra, uh, basically metamaterial then you have acoustic because for example uh, i used to have a lot of complaint about echo so i erected like uh, two uh, foam mattresses it's like you know four inches by three foot by six foot uh, two of them so fundamentally very expensive but again it's physically bulky but if we had meta material uh, acoustic system i could literally achieve the same level of uh, basically echo reduction by one millimeter thick materials like people have built uh, structures that allow sound energy to be dissipated so quickly it's like it's freaky it's like you know you have giant uh, car engine going boom, 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 here on uh, one inch away you're like i can't hear any damn thing it's like it's freaky so those puppy will come into that department now when you are talking about something this uh, complicated, somebody thought, what will happen if mix or hybrid system? Basically, these metamaterials are not necessarily independent from each other. You may, uh, if you desire, you can make something that is mechanical and electromagnetic at the same time. So you could have weird, uh, basically mechanical property with weird electromagnetic uh, system so basically a glass that physically changes the shape uh, while changing how it behaves so it can literally go from far focus to near focus while going from red to uh, basically blue you can have weird things so mixing is possible and there are many more types these are like the big ones that i was interested into so there are many many more now what's the logic behind it how the heck we are achieving things basically how the heck you can make uh, basically a millimeter thick glass behave like a centimeter thick glass how the heck that's happening how the heck you're achieving that all that if you go down if you narrow it down to what the hell is driving it is basically geometry so geometrical effect is takes uh, allows you to control the properties and those people who have worked with uh, chemistry they already know that like for example you can arrange uh, carbon atoms in one way one geometry will give you diamond another geometry will give you graphite another geometry will give you graphene all of these have fundamentally different properties now this is doing the same thing on a much bigger level so instead of like uh, going down to molecular level or nanotechnology you are like bit above so basically you are in material range so you are achieving a geometrical based system here so geometry is the core here understand the geometry every time you will see a metamaterial be it physical one be it electromagnetic one it's always about the geometry and electromagnetic one you can just think of them in this way it's just uh, basically fancy antenna again fine tune for that exact specification so for example military would spend a lot of money to make uh, microwave uh, invisibility cloak and uh, micro uh, basically infrared invisibility cloak they will not try to make a uh, basically optical spectrum because we cannot achieve engineering of that level yet physics does not stop us our engineering does but microwave can be done with today's technology infrared bit difficult but we can principally 
uh, get close to it so that's the first thing geometry allows you to do that and then distribution of that geometry so you can literally have a material uh, that uh, for example of that door hinge example uh, basically door handle you can literally have distributions it's like this geometry allows us to pivot this geometry allows us to do linear motion you can literally do that with distribution nothing else is changing just like this block go here this block goes here so these two core component allows you to achieve what you want to do that's the whole point now how how deep you go that's up to you like basically you can talk about uh, structures that you can see with your eyes or structure that requires to you to use electron uh, basically electron microscope to see that's up to you so but that's all we are talking about we have these two elements uh, geometry and distribution and both of them allows us to control whatever we want that's the whole thing this is utilizing maths amazing power now what we can expect in the future well for example things can go a bit hoo-ha basically a bit emotional you can imagine anything and fundamentally a meta material should allow you to do that so things can do many things and one thing so the reason why meta material gets so much interest it allows actual invisibility now be mindful when i'm talking actual invisibility that means if it was actually built you will be blind if you wear it but again you can bypass that you can have a two-way mirror in the eyes so it might work but you get the point like physics is not stopping that and military is pouring a lot of money to make stealth aircraft that is actually invisible to microwave be mindful at this point in time all stealth aircraft are is hard to detect it's not like okay let's say for uh, example uh, when you're talking about passenger plane that's specifically designed to be loud radio signature wise why you want them to see like dude where are you how far you are like how much fuel you have you want them to like be very loud when you're talking about fighter jet you don't want them to be loud and not to mention they are physically smaller so their radar signature is smaller so you can make them a bit like you know less obvious but again, there is no aircraft at this point in time in planet existence where it's like, okay, this is a reduction, I can go through it and it will not detect. That's not happening. All it's going to do is like, okay, let's say it could detect for 10 km out, normal fighter jet, stealth one may glow, get as close to 8. But if you do actual meta material engineering around that, where microwave just goes and just goes through it, like nothing is there, then in principle, you can achieve true stealth on microwave, which is radar spectrum. So fundamentally invisibility is possible and same thing can be done with uh, basically a smaller counterpart of electromagnetic wave uh, basically red blue green you can do that fundamentally there is nothing in physics stopping you it's just that our engineering has not caught up to it like best case scenario we can achieve uh, infrared because infrared goes uh, like the nanometer size basically how big the wave is uh, the smaller your component you have to make directly proportional to the wave so microwaves they are huge so components you can see them with your naked eye uh, when you're talking about infrared the wavelength is very small but thankfully our uh, semiconductor industry allows us to make things that are like you know five nanometer across we can do that ultraviolet yeah bye bye we can't do that so that's why i'm saying and it can make everything better imagine it this way your camera phone in principle could actually have a full frame image sensor in that with all the ability with autofocus with constant aperture with all that jazz and it will be so light so compact you won't even give a damn about it so fundamentally everything can be made better including uh, basically antennas uh, for example one of the example of uh, meta material is that you can right now we make materials antennas design geometry and all that jazz we do that like you can remember old antennas they used to be large huge now everything is integrated because of better engineering and geometry uh, but we can reach a point where our antenna right now is like let's just focus on this band between these two bands our antenna can focus this much it's like it that's how narrow we can make it but with meta material you can be like okay only this much what will that mean that simply means if you make an antenna that is like exactly focus on 2.5 gigahertz it will literally improve our uh, radio communication by 10 folds just by that because it will remove what we call noise so fundamentally everything would become better if we make this now one thing you have to understand uh, in recent times people have got a very warped sense of a uh, timeline simply because uh, you know this so-called uh, newsletter media and like you know science journalists they, they I don't even know how the heck they became science journalists it's like they see something as like this is the next big thing it, that never happens it's like it takes time eons sometimes for example when you talk about metals for example stainless steel uh, metal uh, soft iron things of that nature they took hundreds of years like you may think okay blacksmith working back in the days it does not matter no he laid down the principle on which other people built another foundation and on top of those like you keep building and then you reach to today's world same thing have happened with meta materials it's like somebody in the lab will design something today somebody else will add on top of it then it will happen like 50 60 times then you will reach a point where it's like oh i have a meta material camera lens in my camera it does not happen like boop Oh, I saw in a lab and then it's like, yeah, you know, in real life. And that's why like people are so frustrated with battery technology. It's like somehow they expect that 
साइकिल टू बिस्किट वॉज लाइक ओ वाई डोंट सोडियम आयन बैटरी इज रियल ओ वाई डोंट दिस बैटरी इज रियल ओ वाई डोंट ग्लास बैटरी इज रियल लाइक टू इट जनरली टेक्स एट बेस्ट के सीनेरियो फिफ्टी ईयर्स इज लाइक सम हाउ यू एक्सपेक्टिंग दैट टू मैजिकली श्रिंक या यू मे एबल टू श्रिंक इट डाउन टू ट्वेंटी पर ईयर्स और समथिंग लाइक दैट बट नॉट लेस दैन दैट लाइक टेन यू यू आर रियली स्ट्रेचिंग इट लाइक यू लाइक समबडी लाइक बिलगेट्स इज फंडिंग योर बिल यू मे एबल टू अचीव दैट so timeline is something very interesting so core level change when you are talking about like fundamentally rethinking how we use our things it takes time for example einstein will come up with the mathematics of laser some engineers down the line will figure out a microwave laser some engineer down the line will figure out how to make optical spectrum laser some product engineer will figure out hey we can make barcode scanner somebody will figure out how to make a blu ray from that it will take years decades it's normal so fundamental core level changes will take time be mindful of that and we are already using it in many small ways that's why it's specified uh, modern wifi routers don't even need antennas anymore like i have a geo fiber router which is like uh, 5 gigahertz and 2.5 gigahertz and antenna is not physically programmed because of the geometry it became so good so we are using it small uh, design elements of it and specifically in optical communication there are many things right now used in optical uh, communication like basically fiber lines that does not make sense it's like uh, somehow there is this fiber system and it will take the one fiber beam and it's like okay red go here blue go here and it's not acting like a prism it's like pseudo prism it's like no you only go here you go there it's like it's mind boggling so we are already utilizing it in many ways now be mindful the more amazing things for example that shoe example where it's like super butter smooth you don't have to think about it and the moment it interacts with something hard it becomes equivalent uh, hardness that will take time that will take a lot of time so be mindful relax so this was my presentation on meta materials i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it then didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me your disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them surprise press the bell icon like, surprise i'm saying subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching